Hello and welcome to the big picture. The RBI's monetary policy review today decided to keep the interest rates, cash reserve ratio and the repo rates unchanged. The RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan, who has been in the news for some weeks now about whether he would continue in the post after his term ends in September, kept the suspense going with a light-hearted remark that he would not like to be so cruel as to spoil the fun of the media. Meanwhile, the policy expressed some apprehension about the retail inflation rising more sharply than expected. Interestingly, the RBI governor avoided commenting on the latest GDP data released by the government. We will look today at the RBI's monetary policy announced today and also whether the RBI governor has given any hints about this continuation or otherwise, apart from what the policy forebodes for the economy. To discuss this, I have with me Nitin Desai, former Chief Economic Advisor, Government of India, Renu Kohli, former staff member RBI and IMF, Sanjeev Gupta, Chairman Banking and Financial Services Committee at the PhD Chamber of Commerce, Professor Praveen Jha of the Centre for Economic Studies and Planning at the JNU, and K. Badrinath, Editor of Policy, Financial Chronicle. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Desai, does this monetary policy look like the last one of Raghuram Rajan? No, no, I think he, the One-Eyed King looks forward to being looked after by Raghura for some more time. But uh, no, I don't think. I don't see anything in the, in the policy or in his speech which gives any such uh, hint. It's absolutely correct of him to do what he has done. He can't say anything one way or the other. So I, I don't see any... In his speech, he, he actually made a mention that you know he has covered most of the key focus areas which he had talk, spoken about when he... Assumed office. Yeah, so yeah, but is that are, some kind of an indication? Yeah, no. Because there are several references to some of the new things he has done on the on the banking system. The marginal landing rate business, the, the, the fact that he has forced them to, uh, to show their non-performing assets more clearly. Remember, he stayed on a March uh, 2017 deadline. And I would say that my guess is that he would certainly wish to stay at least till then. He would wish to stay. Whether he would stay or not is well, that's a, a different matter. Completely different matter. But I'm just saying that I don't see anything in this which is a hint of uh, a sort of farewell speech. Okay. Uh, in any case, he's, got, he's going to do one more. August. He's got to, he's got to do one. This, this, this is not the last one. The August 9th one is still to come. That, that is he before he... Uh, that's right. His term is there till September. In September. Uh, Reno? You know what? What do you find most interesting in this? Because you know, one of the things is that we had discussed about the GDP figures the other day, yeah, and you know, some people were expecting that he will he will have something to say on that, but he doesn't seem to have taken the bait. Uh, that's correct. They have avoided comment uh, upon uh, the GDP estimates in so far as. Uh, what, how it bears upon their stance. They have accepted those estimates and they've retained the um, forecast of 7.6% uh, of GVA, which is uh, what the central bank has to do. I mean, you have to live with the official numbers at the end of the day. Uh, the signal point I found uh, about uh, the monetary policy statement away, uh, today was the complete uh, uh, change uh, in the inflation outlook. If you looked, go back to just two months ago, they were pretty confident that this would be decelerating, uh, CPI inflation would be decelerating steadily and would remain range bound around 5 to 5.3%. But now they say that the upside risks have risen and there is greater uncertainty. So, you know, in their fan charts, you would find that the bands have uh, narrowed at the bottom baseline and widened at the top. So, going ahead, I think that's what is important. And uh, even though the central bank hopes that a good monsoon, etc., will abate and the existing snack in the industry will contribute to, uh, 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 towards disinflation, the worry is actually the core inflation, which is the services inflation. Now that, if uh, I may say so, has not really gone below uh, 5 to 5.5% for more than one year, despite the fact that oil prices have uh, they collapsed as they did. So that, that is a concern and that is something what they have expressed uh, in their statement. I, I do think that uh, there is, even though they say that we continue to be, uh, the stance will continue to be accommodative and they will look for further easing, 
um, we need a manner from heaven for them to be able to ease more in the next few months. I don't foresee that. Mr. Desai, would you like to react to that? No, I would say just one, one on the oil prices business. Let me just yes. make it very clear that what the CPI shows is the prices that we pay in the market. And the government did not pass down yes. the full fall in the dramatic fall in the petroleum prices to the country. There's not that much difference between the prices we are paying now and the prices we were paying a year ago. Marginal difference. Exactly. So I would not expect that. The government did not allow the international deflation in commodity prices to pass through to the CPI. And I would say that the CPI running at around 5%, 5% they, and they have pointed out why. You know, because basically, if you look at it, it is the non-cereal food items. The food items in which the government has no capacity to intervene because they don't have a procurement system, they don't have stocks, they don't have a distribution system. And that's the reality in India, that outside the two food grains, rice and cereals, rice and wheat, the government really does not have the capacity. And remember, that's what he, uh, Raghuram Rajan mentions in, uh, you know, that it's all in vegetables, fruits, pulses, oils, etc. But the, uh, And 5% I mean, is not bad, frankly. I mean, don't think the five percent is bad. You don't even know some of the because you know he, they clearly say that we didn't expect the inflation to be. Yes, I mean <clears throat> the statement is quite clear that uh, uh, they had hoped that uh, uh, April May things will not become as bad as they have become. Uh, on the other hand, you see these inflation numbers, as you know, are in any case uh, a bit of a slippery terrain. Yeah. Uh, Talk to anyone in, on the street and they'll tell you that uh, in the last two months prices have increased by 25 rupees, 30, 30 <laughs> rupees, 25 percent, 40 percent. All kinds of numbers are being floated there and so on and so forth. So uh, what is the extent of consumer price inflation? You know, I have always maintained that that is something which, uh, you know, our numbers do not quite capture correctly what, the, what is the there. Ground. In any case, the gap between, you know, this WPI and CPI, etc. And, and so on and so forth. In any case, is something that again, you know, the, the way the numbers come out have lots of issues. I mean, I don't think we can go into great details of uh, those uh, numbers. But uh, it is indeed the case that, in my assessment, that possibly the inflation rate is higher than what is it's being, being su suggested. So, you know, on inflation, that's what I would uh, <laughs> like to, yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Gupta. How do you react to that? You know, the, 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 the interest rates, six, 65 basis points have been brought down in the last one, one and a half years. But it has not been passed on to the, the banks have not passed it on to the customers and to the borrowers. And every time the RBI governor has been pleading with the, with the banks that, you know, please pass it on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, is the, what has been the impact of that? So, two things I think you rightly brought out. <clears throat> That in spite of the fact that RBI did try to, you know, lower the interest rates consecutively over the period of last two years, or especially his tenure, uh, industry does reel again under the pressure of the same high interest rates and banks have actually not transferred it down. I think there are very significantly Im impactful reasons for that. And as I read the banks also, the industry's demand is obviously going to be that you lower the interest rates, increase the money supply in the hands of the the private sector so that they can, you know, do more. But critical reason looks to be that the credit demand has really not upsurged. And unless the credit demand is expected to also rise, there will be no point in the banks, you know, they're already reeling in under fact, in fact, NPAs. River, in fact, the RBI governor mentioned this today. That's right. In fact, I was about to conclude with yeah. that. But <sighs> let me first say that the background to the whole thing remains that, you know, while the interest rate levels on the current, when you lower the interest rate levels, your current interest margins and your current income levels come down unless the offtake increases, you've not gained much actually. So the banks are also in a catch-22 situation there. So we cannot blame the banks entirely. But the fact remains that one of the critical worries he's also brought out in his statements today, as you probably will relate with me, is that the, the private sector investment is not really Maybe rising at all. At all. Yeah. And we are all going to bank upon either the public sector investments now catalyze the economy into a further growth area or whatever 7.86 or whatever is the target now. So the, the large theme there is that, you know, the private sector is reeling so much, in my opinion, under the stress assets, 
And I think I will take one more cue out of the comments made today that on one hand, he's trying to, you know, catalyze the growth and control inflation and actually bring forth the positive steps, even so much so controlling NPAs and stress assets. Launching of these SMAs and other things is a very important step and systematic step in that <laughs> direction. But on the other, the statement today is very clearly for the banks to remain very cautiously and away from these stress assets funds that are being pr uh, promoted so that their NPAs and stress levels actually do not become a spoiler for the economic growth tomorrow. And no I way. feel that he's, I, I really wish from two sides, sir, that both from the government side and all of us in the industry and, uh, uh, you know, the banking sector, I wish from both the sides that Raghuram Rajan was to be here with us for at least three more years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my wish. Okay, Badri. Badri, how do you look at this? You know, this NPS business, does he, he, what, what are the signals which, which have been sent? See, with regards to NPAs, RBI governor made a significant statement. He says that the banks cannot hold the majority stake in the funds that are going to be created, right, right. where the stressed assets are going to be housed. So the issue here is he wants to do clean up the balance sheets of most of the banks so that they can revive the some kind of a credit offtake can improve and perhaps there is still room for some kind of uh, uh, more money to flow into the industry sector or the exporters or elsewhere. But it's a long call. I don't think it is going to be very easy and it's, nobody is going to come forward to, you know, uh, take huge stakes in the stressed, uh, uh, stressed asset funds. So it's very really difficult the, actually. Sir, once again. Ah. Yeah, okay. Yes, one Mr. of the important things that he mentions here is the uh, for, uh, the, the, the withdrawal of FCNR deposits. Yes, that the is twenty billion dollars worth. I, of it. I was coming to and that. The stress you know? that that will pose, and that essentially, is sometime what, in September it will start. Yes, that. yes, and yes. what he said is that we are covered for that. So he says we are covered for that. It's a very shrewd appreciation of what are the potential uh, confidence eroding uh, points ahead. One is if the inflation suddenly flares up. Another is the any fears that may arise when these $20 billion uh, become uh, due. And what is interesting is the way in which the RBI has anticipated this. So, uh, and they've anticipated this and have said that, look, we are taking care of it. We are under, this is under control. So, uh, uh, Reno, this, this FCNR thing, which he's talking about, about $26, million, $26 billion, the $20 billion they're expecting to be withdrawn. And he says that there's bound to be some rupee dollar volatility. But the, 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 the kind of confidence which he has shown you think will, will, will be enough to con, you know, not have an effect on the, uh, on the situation? Well, it's a, it's a uh, signaling their strength and their ability that uh, they will be able to handle it. At the same time, there are apprehensions. And one of the things on which he was questioned at the post-conference, uh, uh, post-review uh, conference uh, call was uh, the fact that uh, there are counter, some of the counterparties who have to, you know, with whom they have contracted the forward purchases right. and deliveries have to be made. They have expressed apprehension that they may not be able to deliver. Right. So obviously to that extent, the reserves will go down. If we were to expect that the reserves will go down by exactly that much amount, assuming in the worst case scenario, your reserves are going to be run down by 20, 25 billion um, uh, in the event of outflow. I'm just taking the worst case scenario, right? The base case, there, right. that is none of the counterparties deliver. Well, to that extent, you will have, you will run down reserves. The central bank will be, will have to supply dollars. There will be an impending liquidity, rupee liquidity squeeze in the market. So there is going to be a lot of volatility and churn. It's the job of the central bank to you be aware and to build their defenses and shore up and be ready with the with the tools and keep an eye on these things and and that's what they're doing. But today's conference, they were definitely uh, signaling strength. They were also kind of issuing caution or cautioning any kind of speculation on this uh, on this account. The second thing I want to just flag, uh, which has not come up in the discussion so, so far, is the monetary transmission. Now, you know, this has been a long-running saga for the last one year, 
and a lot of things have been done first it um, one of the things was that okay the savings rate uh, is acting the administered savings rate is acting as a floor and therefore the banks uh, uh, banks are not being able to lower so that was done then the banks complained there was liquidity uh, was in deficit and the liquidity was um, uh, uh, you know eased uh, in april though what connection liquidity has with interest rates i really do not know there isn't any but anyway then the rbi changed the marginal um, how loans are priced you now from base rate they shifted to mclr having done all that nothing really has happened against 150 bps on average lending rates have come down uh, until end of may they were down by just 63 bps now today for the first time the rbi also said that recapitalization of the banks will help is right. that now that is also something which is new and which tells you that the banks are very weakened and by now they are too risk averse to lend perhaps so you know we are just going i'm just piecing together or you know um, articulating evidence which is anecdotal so far and what the central bank has said the fact is that monetary transmission is not happening and why uh, the traditional channels are blocked we still do not know yes mr gupta Sir, I just wanted to say one thing that this $28 billion that we were talking about, uh, let's re review the $360 billion worth of currency chest is what is already built up and is lying with India and as of now. And I think that may not be as impactful as we are probably making it out to be. I just only wanted to add that comment that, you know, this is a very, very significant, strong position in favor of India. And that's why I say that one of the reasons why uh, Mr. Rajan is rated to be one of the finest uh, central governor, central bank governor for that matter, is credited to a lot of steps that he has done to insulate India from these external impacts that could ever dent India's position. So one of them is this. I just wanted to bring that out. Mr. Dehai, you want to, want to No, no, I think it's very absolutely true. I mean, in oh, the may, sense may that... I, may I quickly respond to that? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, Reno. Yeah, I just want to qualify it that without without any way taking off uh, any kind of sheen or credit from Dr. Rajan is that even before ahead of before 2008, India was building reserves as were the other East Asian countries. Each country ever since the East Asian crisis, crisis. 97, 98. So you know reserves had peaked, is... and the 2008 crisis was handled by India in a, in a very similar fashion. So uh, you know just. I just want to leave okay. it there. Okay. No, I think this is a very important thing. People don't always... I'll, I'll give one, another small example. One of the things that our banking sector has not suffered from is overexposure to real estate. Right. And you know why that happened? Because Reddy... Uh, unlike in the US. Yes, because Reddy, when he, when he sensed that these people are getting tempted by the real estate boom in the... He put in a higher capital requirement for real estate lending and that stopped it. In its tracks. So there is a lot of shrewdness which has been exercised by Reserve Bank for a long time now. I think we've been very fortunate in the governors that we've had uh, uh, there. Particularly, I would say that uh, his predecessor, uh, Reddy, who was equally unpopular in Delhi, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> so both sectoral caps and risk weightages no, uh, have actually you know, yes. steered the capital into uh, various sensible, buckets, yeah. so that making it more risk averse to the banking sector. Absolutely. I, I fully, I think but that's very well But the problem of the well NPAs is because partly it's a problem of the corporate sector. Exactly. The real problem, we keep on saying banks, NPAs, but the, but the other the side of it is, the, is it, corporate yeah. sectors which, mis, which did not know how to handle good times. No, on, yeah. on, <laughs> you see, since there was a lot of talk about this uh, 20 to 25 billion, if it goes and so on and so forth, uh, his statement to, uh, today was, we may supply dollars in case of extreme yeah. volatility, but no one should take this for granted. granted. No one so, you know, one has to be yeah, uh, cautious he has, about he has, that. Yes. Been, yeah, yeah, he's he's cautious about so very, very But you see, I mean, in a sense, uh, relating to this whole question of monetary transmission and so on, in my assessment, and I think there are lots of economists who would agree with me, this whole you know, thrust on inflation targeting in a context like India, the kind of economy that we are and so on and so forth. The monetary transmission which is assumed to take place through some interest rate cuts or interest rate changes and so on and so forth, I think is again one of those very, very slippery sort of terrains as far as I see it. My sense is that uh, you can't really go in for inflation targeting by relying on what has been done. And uh, so, so, so in that sense, something which gets talked about a great deal when we refer to Raghuram Rajan's management skills and so on and so forth, 
to my mind, that has been one of the major thrust areas uh, in terms of the policy discourse, but also I would consider it one of the weakest areas. In fact, in a whole range of other areas, what he has done possibly is a lot more you know, theoretically and empirically grounded in a much stronger fashion compared to you know, this particular piece of the overall wisdom. Right? Of, uh, if, you, if you play around with the rate, this will happen or that will happen and so on and so forth. I think that, that, that to yeah, my I mind think, is, is, yeah, is... That is true. That. I mean, particularly if it is a non-food, non-cereal yeah. inflation and so on, uh, you, you can't, can't manage uh, potato and onion and tomato prices through interest rates. Uh, <laughs> that is the reality. But he, this, he recognizes that. He places much emphasis on supply-side management. The problem is we have no supply-side management on food items other than on rice and wheat. Let's be very clear. Okay. Badri? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, Bad issue here is... Uh, um, I'll come to you, uh, uh, Reno. Badri? See, uh, the, here I would like to make one or two points here. Uh, we were talking about the $20 billion outflow in terms of FCNR deposits and uh, things like that. Uh, the RBI governor clearly says that there will be some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, liquidity crunch. Yeah, he uh, talks about which, uh, the will, counterparties. Uh. Uh -huh. And second issue he talks about is that, yes, there will be liquidity crunch, but we'll be able to manage and uh, overcome this situation, second. And third issue he talks about is the transmission of interest rate cut, which has not happened till now, will slow down further because of the liquidity crunch, which is, and henceforth it will linger on till the second uh, quarter of next fiscal. Okay. So, which is maybe worrying in terms, if you see from the consumer's perspective. Well, if you and me, if the RBI governor says that, okay, banks have not cut the interest rates as I have expected. But if you and me go to buy a car or something else, then what happens? You're going to uh, cough up through your nose. Incidentally, so, I how do you control such a situation? How do you tackle such a situation from the one consumer's quick, perspective? One quick thing in passing, I am also a little surprised at his statement that some of the counterparties may not deliver. This is not the normal thing yeah. one says, you know. If you sign a forward contract, you don't have the no, same time why is he, what to No, go. why is he saying that? Reno, why is he saying that? Ah, I didn't understand why he put it Reno, in Reno, why is he saying that? And then the, this question was raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, there is always, uh, you see, he explained it. Like, for, for example, an exporter has a contract with, with, with a bank and the bank in turn has a contract with the central bank. Okay, now the exporter can always say that, oh, uh, may say that, look, um, I'm, I want to roll over my contract. And that is embedded in these forward contracts. So if there is a rollover, a fresh one takes, replaces its place. At the same time, the bank would have to honor uh, its um, uh, obligation uh, to deliver those dollars to the central bank. And in, it will honor, of course, but then it will have to buy it from the market. So whichever way, ultimately, these the, the impact will be felt in a dearth of dollars um, of foreign exchange, foreign currency in the foreign exchange market. And who will s supply enough? I mean, if, if the demand exceeds supply, then obviously there are implications for your currency. And so therefore the central bank will step forward. No, but so it's what quite about, simple. What about uh, the obligation? What about the... On, uh, sorry, you know, okay. We've had a lot of... Yeah, yeah, please, please finish that. They will deliver. They will deliver. If I am the bank, for example, I am Bank X, and I have uh, I, I have a contract with the central bank, and this contract was entered into in 2013, and uh, these were bought by the central bank with delivery X, uh, three years hence in say September 2016. Now I will deliver. Of course, I will um, uh, deliver. But the point is that if the exporters or the, my other parties from uh, where the realizations will come from, if they choose to roll over, then as a bank, I will go and buy it from somewhere in the market. Right. So the penalty or the honoring of the contract is already there in the market price of those dollars. Okay. So uh, that's the way it works. I, I want to quickly touch upon the inflation outlook and the food. We've had a lot of talk about food inflation, but yes. the real worry is actually services inflation by and large so no, if you take away all also. the impact of you know all the transitory components yes now you know these are prices these are this is the inflation in what we see in medical services in education there just isn't enough supply of good quality educational institutions um, healthcare service affordable healthcare services and all that now that is a relatively inelastic portion where 
prices are increasing and as the Reserve Bank has explained two, three years ago in the Urjit Patel Committee report that you have inflation expectations which are shaped by food and they spill over into wages. Now that is the responsiveness and the RBI has expressed uh, a hope that there would be supply um, uh, augmentation or expansion on in the services side and that would contribute towards disinflation going ahead. So that, that, uh, that's something that is a long term thing. For because right? It is yeah, that of component of <laughs> inflation which hasn't really, which is... Hand yeah. No, in a sense, you know, I mean, this is something which uh, almost uh, uh, every governor, not only every governor, but in fact, uh, most uh, uh, important spokespersons of the government do talk about every once in a while. But, you know, somehow, the obsession with a kind of crude monetarism in terms of how do we address it here and now. Now, that is something which I have found very worrisome. And in that sense, since uh, Dr. Reddy's reference uh, came uh, from uh, Dr. Desai, I would say that uh, possibly Dr. Reddy had a much bigger canvas when he was looking at how to handle things. Compared to that, you know, I have found... Uh, the Raghuram Rajan lacking in... Lacking, particularly when it comes to let's say, the fiscal kind of uh, uh, part of the larger policy framework. So, it's much more accent on monetary compared to the fiscal, right? So, so, he, you know, he, so are, you, are, you try, are you trying to uh, support Subramanian Swami's theory? No, in no, this? no, no, not at all. Not at all. No, 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 no. You, <laughs> not, not even in my wildest dream. <laughs> we, are, we, we are not to make rude remarks on Rajya Sabha members on Rajya Sabha team. <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh, we we'll, won't do that. Uh, but uh, no, I think, uh, let me say that, uh, yes, it is possibly true because Reddy came from a different background. He didn't come right. from the monetary system. He really came from a background where most of his life was spent actually on real de on development issues right. yes. and in the finance ministry and so on. But I would say that I think this the statement does show a certain acceptance that uh, inflation management in India cannot be done simply through monetary uh, policy. It has to be done uh, very much through supply side management. It shows a greater understanding and sensitivity to the specific conditions of the country than the, the, that we had. I would also say that uh, there are some other indications in this which we need to look at. For instance, there is some indication here that corporate results have improved. You know, he talks about the Q4 results uh, which have been reported yes. and uh, the, what it is showing there, uh, but it's still guarded and says that there's still uh, uh, some more work which is required. So that sensitivity, that investment sentiment matters. And I must say that at least on transmission, he has been pushing things. And that's why the shift to the marginal cost, um, the, the, the lending rate. And there I think part of the constraint on the banks was that the government took a long time to adjust uh, the interest rates on other small savings deposits, you see. If you don't do that, then the, and the banks lower, they have to lower deposit rates also, they will suffer. I think they already probably already are suffering because, uh, you know, you roll back on so, some of okay. the changes. Mr. Gupta, very quickly, yeah. you think uh, the, the industry will respond? You think the private sector would respond in any way in, uh, to what, what, what has been done today? Uh, there's not, expect, you, not too much of response, actually. You, Okay. which is going to be generated out of what has happened. So this is just a, more of a going forward with the same situation, but there are guidances to uh, inflation, there is guidance to growth. I think to that extent, yes, there is going to be a, a, a kind of application of uh, mind resources into you know, matching the growth targets that have been set. And maybe it can start, which is what stock market is already reflecting, if you see. Uh, Badri, there could be yes, a positive uh, sentiment, uh, yes. Badri, very quickly. Here, the issue is that the public investments have picked up. Yeah. Where right. Public spending has gone up. Right. But private sector has not responded adequately and that uh, is to exact. the kind of uh, you know, uh, investment push that has been given by the government. That so, is. Uh, why the foreign investors seem to be more gungo than the homegrown companies. That is that. I mean, that is that is where the problem has has been has been for quite some time now. The private investments have not been picked up, have not been picking up, and today also the RBI governor is again talking about it. We'll wait and watch how it'll all progress in the coming weeks and months. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue, the big picture, same time tomorrow.